Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio along with Mr. Googles here with a very quick update video about changes to the Zoom nonverbal feedback and reactions features. Now, previously in Zoom, the nonverbal feedback features were available in the participants window. This was designed to allow participants in a meeting to signal the host by clicking a button to do something like raise their hand, give a thumbs up, or answer yes or no to a question, which meant the host didn't have to look around at everybody's thumbnails to see if they were physically raising their hand or giving a thumbs up. When you click that button, the corresponding icon would appear next to your name in the participants list. Now, that was great on its own, but it got a little confusing when Zoom launched the Reactions button. This was a button at the bottom of the screen with similar but not identical options like a thumbs up, but then some other ones like clapping or a heart that weren't available in the nonverbal feedback feature. And instead of showing up next to your name, these symbols would show up over your video thumbnail. Now, as of version 5.4.7, Zoom has eliminated that confusion by merging these features. So you will see that the nonverbal feedback buttons are no longer available in the bottom of the participants window. Everything is here under reactions. So when I click reactions and for example, click thumbs up, I will now get a thumbs up both over my video frame and next to my name up here in the participants list. Now, in my opinion, one possible downside to this change, depending on how you were going to use it, is that everything except for the raise hand feature will now also disappear after about 10 or 15 seconds. So that is how reactions worked previously. It's not how nonverbal feedback feature worked. Those would stay there until you deselected it to remove it or the host cleared everyone. So for example, if I answer yes to a question and we sit here and wait for about 10 or 15 seconds or so, you'll see these check marks disappear even though I didn't click anything. So if you wanted to give students several minutes to work on a problem and then just use this for quick and informal polling to answer yes or no or something like that, that isn't really going to work because it's going to disappear for students who answered the question early. It now only works if you have everybody answer within a very narrow window of time. The raise hand feature does still work like it did before where you have to click a button to raise your hand and then your hand will stay raised until you click the lower hand button or the host lowers it for you. Now, as you saw there, the thumbnails jumped around when I did that. So I have also logged into this meeting on my phone. So we have a list of three people and you will see that when I go ahead and hit the raise hand button on my phone, the phone now jumps up towards the top of the participant list. It doesn't go in front of the host, but it's kind of next in line. And it moved the thumbnail to the top left. So if you did have a bigger class with a lot of students, that would help you tell who has their hand raised so they aren't buried way down here off the bottom of the screen in the participant list. And finally, you can do raise hand and one other reaction at the same time. So I'm gonna do that here on my phone. I'm gonna go ahead and hit raise hand. You see as the host, I see that raised hand and the thumbnail moves. On the phone, I'm also gonna go ahead and just add a heart. And you see now as the host, I see both of those icons here. I have the option to lower the hand, but I can't get rid of the heart as the host. That's just going to time out automatically. But if I try to go ahead and do multiple simultaneous reactions on the phone, for example, I'm gonna add a heart and then hit yes, it's just going to replace the heart with the yes. You can't add multiple reactions at once. So you can do hand raise and one other thing. All right, again, that was a very quick update video. If this is the first one of my videos you've seen, I highly recommend checking out the playlist in the description below the video. I have a ton of other tutorials about teaching and learning online with Zoom. If you are one of my repeat viewers, I thank you for coming back. As always, if you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, I cannot guarantee that I will get to everything, but if you leave a comment below this video, I will do my best to get back to you. Thank you.